Hi everyone, so we were solving the assignment one and this will be the second part, right? So in the first part, we have solved a few questions. Now we will be moving to this question. So you have to draw the voltage transfer characteristics. So in these kind of questions, many students get confused. Now what will happen if V in is greater than that, that certain voltage, whether diode will be turned on or turned off. So I will give you a realistic approach how to solve these kind of questions, right? Multiple diode questions and V in is also varying, right? V in is not constant. If V in is constant and there are multiple diodes, we can solve it. But V in is also varying, right? So what we have to do first, just get it in your mind that you are going to apply open circuit test. That's it. So first I am going to apply open circuit test. I am just making the circuit that D1 will be open circuited. This is my V in. D1 will be open circuited. This is 6 kilo ohm. This is 10 volt here. 10 volt here. This is 4 kilo ohm. All these are grounded here. This is also grounded. This is also grounded. And uh, this D2 will be open circuited. This is 5 volt. To make you understand, I have to make the diagram, right? Otherwise, you can think directly as well. This is V0. This is V. This is P. This is N. This is N. And this is P. Right? And if these are open circuited, this is open circuited and this is open circuited. So only this is a closed loop. So what will be the potential here? What will be the potential here? That will be 4 volt. The potential here will be 4 volt. Right? This is your VD2, VD2, and this is your VD1. So tell me what is your VD1? VD1 is V in minus 4. VD1 is V in minus 4. What is your VD2? VD2 is 1 volt. VD2 is 1 volt that is fixed. VD1 is V1 minus 4 volt. One thing we certainly know. First case, if V in is less than 4 volt, what will happen? This V D1 will be negative. Diode D1 off and D2 will certainly be off. On sorry, D2 will certainly be on because if this is off, then V in will not come in action. This is 4 volt and V D2 will also be 4 off. So V D2 diode D2 will be on. And if diode D2 is on, that means D2 will be replaced with short circuit. If D2 is replaced with short circuited, so simply what will be your V0? V0 will be simply 5 volt only. D2 will be shorted. Right? D2 is shorted and this will be your V0. V0 is equals to 5 volt. Right? So V0 is equals to 5 volt. Now, what happens if V is greater than 4? What do you think? What do you feel like? If V in is greater than 4, what do you think what will happen? You feel like that D1 will be turned on. This is what you feel. If V in is just greater than 4 volt, V in will be turned on. Let's take an example. V in is 4.5. What will happen? Here 4.5 will come. We are again applying open circuit test. Just don't think that previous, forget about the previous stage. V in is less than 4, forget about that. We are again applying the open circuit test, right? So let's assume there we are having 4.5. We are applying open circuit test. So what will come here? 4 will come here. So this 4 will go here as well. This 4 will go here as well. Now VD2 is 1 volt. VD1 is 0.5 volt. So can you turn on D1 directly? No. First, who will turn on? What D2 will say? D2 will say, I have the more 4 bias potential. So I am the boss. So first, I will turn on. So first, D2 will turn on. And based on that circuit, we will decide the condition for D1. Are you getting this point? So one who is having the more potential, that will be the boss. It's not that just V by V in is greater than 4 volt, you can turn it on. So what D2 will say that I am the boss. Now, what potential you need at V in so that D1 becomes the boss? What potential you need at V in so that D1 becomes the boss? That D1 can say that now I will decide that. A condition for D2. You need it, you need that to be greater than 5 volt. Right? You need V in to be greater than 5 volt. So for that's why we will check from 4 to 5 volt now. So what will be our second case? Our second case will be that 
my V in is from 4 volt to 5 volt. 4 volt to 5 volt. So at this time, it feels like that D1 is on. But what will happen? When V in is 4 volt to 5 volt, D2 will turn on first. I, I guess I can copy this. I will copy this. So V in is between 4 to 5 volt. So at that time your V D2 is 1 volt only and V D1 will be V in minus 4. And if V in is 4 to between 4 to 5 volt, that means and uh, if uh, V in is between 4 to 5, that means V D1 will be less than 1 volt. Right? That means D2 will turn on first and then we will decide the condition of D1 right so first D2 will turn on and if D2 turns on what will happen with D1 tell me at this point this is our D1 D2 turns on, D2 turns on, D2 turns on, what will happen? This will be shorted. So, this 5 volt will go directly here. And now, what, what about D1? D1 at N side it is having 5 volt and at P side it is having something less than 5 volt. So, D1 will be turned off. Are you getting this point? So, when it is between 4 to 5, what is happening? Here this D2 is turned on. If this is turned on, you can make it something like this. If D2 is turned on, this 5 volt will reach here. Right? This 5 volt will reach here. Here we are having V in and here 5 volt. And this V in is less than 5 volt. So what will happen? D1 goes off. So D1 is off and D2 is on. D2 is on. And D1 is off. So, what will be V0? Your V0 will again be equals to 5 volt only. Because if it is off, V in will not come in action. This will certainly be shorted. So, V0 will be 5 volt. So, what is the conclusion we are having till now? That when V in is less than 5 volt, when V in is less than 5 volt, V0 is 5 volt only. Right? And one more thing, when VIN is negative, when VIN is negative, what will happen? D1 will be off and then D2 will be on. That here I am writing VIN is less than 4 volt. That means I am taking the condition minus infinity to 4 volt, right? It's not that I am taking 0 to 4 volt, minus infinity to 4 volt. If it is negative, D1 will certainly be off and D2 will be on only because VIN will not come in action. This will be 4 and this is 5, 5 and 4. What I am saying, VIN is minus 2 volt. So what we will say, this is... 10 and here you are having 4. Minus 2 and 4. At P side you are having minus 2 and N side you are having 4. That means diode D1 will be O. If diode D1 is O, here you are having 4 volt that is constant. Here 5, here 4. That means this will be O. So diode, this will be the same condition. So this is from minus infinity to 4, not from 0 to 4. Right? Yeah, we can remove all those things. Now if V in is greater than 5 volt third condition we are taking that is V in is greater than 5 volt. Now what will happen? If V in is greater than 5 volt, what is V D1? V D1 is V in minus 4. We are always applying open circuit test. Don't forget that. Don't think that in the previous stage it was on. So it will always be on. No, no, no. In the previous stage it was on, in the next stage it can be off as well. So for every stage we are applying open circuit test. What is VD1? VD1 is V in minus 4 volt. What is your VD2? VD2 is 1 volt. Now what is happening? VD1 will be greater than 1 volt. Why so? Because V in is greater than 5 volt. Right? It is greater than 5 volt. Let's assume it is 5.1. That means VD1 will be 1 volt. VD1 will be 1.1 volt. That is greater than VD2. 
so and if vd1 is greater than 1 volt that means vd1 is greater than vd2 that means what will happen first d1 will turn on first d1 will turn on and then we will decide the working condition of we will decide the condition for condition of d2 so now what d1 will say i am having the more forward bias potential so i am the boss now so now d1 is the boss and it is on what will happen with diode d2 now tell me what is happening with diode d2 now diode d2 is here having it is 5 volt here diode d2 is having 5 volt and here it is having v in which is greater than 5 volt so n potential becomes more and p potential becomes less diode d2 is off and if diode d2 is off what happens what will be the circuit if diode d2 is off what will be the circuit d1 is on 6 kilo ohm 10 4 kilo ohm this is 10 volt 6 kilo ohm 4 kilo ohm this is v naught and this is v in if simply this is the circuit because this is off so this will not come in action this 5 volt battery will not come in action so this will be the circuit so simply v naught is equal to v in v naught is equal to v in so this is what we understood what was our final conclusion we have to add a page So the final conclusion was when v in is less than 5 volt your v naught is equals to 5 volt only and when v in is greater than 5 volt your v naught is equals to v in that's it now you can draw the transfer characteristics Five volt is our breaking point. So for being less than five volt, it was five volt. After that, it was following the input. This was five volt, and here V naught is equal to V in. So this was the complete solution. Did you understand it? For every condition we will check with the open circuit test. We will not forget the open circuit test. First, what did we see? We simply applied the open circuit test. Then we go to know Vin is less than 4. Diode D1 will be off. D2 will be on. Then what do we see? For Vin greater than 4, it feels like that D1 can be on. But then we checked that for greater than 4 as well, at some point, what will happen? That still diode D2 is both. So D2 is both and D2 will decide the working condition of D1. So because of that, what did we see? That 5 volt is coming there. That means V in has to be greater than 5 volt for D1 to be turned on. So for D1 to be turned on, we have to apply greater than 5 volt. So for less than 5 volt, D1 is off and D2 is on. So V0 is 5 volt. And when V in is greater than 5 volt, D1 turns on and D2 turns off. So V0 will be equals to V in only. So this is how the transfer characteristic look like. Now we will see the next question. Try attempting it on your own, then just see the solution. So what we will do, we will never forget our ground rules that is open circuit test so in the mind only we will think these to be open circuited so i guess what i can do i can simply copy those paste it yeah so i am applying open circuit test so i will just array r i will just make it open circuit this is p this is n this is n and this is p what do you think what will happen here this will be 100 volt right no current is flowing in this 200 kilo ohm resistance so this will be simply 100 volt only let's not write 100 volt let's just write 100 this will be 100 here what will be potential here 25 what is the potential here v in so at first glance what is your vd1 vd1 is v in minus 100 what is your vd2 
VD2 is here you are having this is your VD2 right P2N here also P2N this is your VD1 what is your VD2 that is minus 75 volt what do you see here D2 is O and for this is V for VD1 to turn on you at least need 100 volt for D1 to turn on you at least need 100 volt so first condition you can make that is if V in is less than 100 volt here you got to know that for D1 to turn on at least you need 100 volt at least 100 volt so if V in is less than 100 volt V in is less than 100 volt then D2 is certainly of D1 will also be of D1 is also of. so simply this will be the condition both are of what will be V0 V0 will simply be 25 volt because there is zero current here so this simply 25 volt will coming will be coming to the output so here V0 will be 25 volt so we got to know this condition that for V in less than 100 volt we are having v0 equals to 25 now for v in greater than for v in greater than 100 volt d1 turns on that feels like that so we will check for v in greater than 100 volt v in greater than 100 volt now let's get it here we will not forget our ground rules that is open circuit test So here you are having V in, here this is your 100, again you are having 100 here and here you are having 25. What is VD2? Still it is minus 75 volt, that means D2 is still O. D2 is O. What is VD1? VD1 is V in minus 100 volt and since V in is greater than 0, Sorry, since V in is greater than 100, that means D1 is on. D1 on. So, what are the conditions? D2 is off, D1 is on. What do you think what will happen? If D2 is off, that means there is no connection between what is the circuit now? D2 is off. This is the circuit. This is your V in. D1 is on and D2 is off. This is 200k. This is 100 volt. This is 100k and this is 25 volt. 100k and this is V0. Is there any current in this branch? Since this is open circuit, there is no current in this branch. Again, V0 is 25 volt. So, in this circuit, irrespective of the working condition of D1 and D2, always V0 is equal to 25 volt. So, if you draw the V0 waveform, what we need to draw in this one? Draw VTC, not draw VTC, bro. You need to draw V0, draw V0 waveform. VTC also you can draw. How will be the VTC? VTC you can draw because irrespective if V in is less than 100, it is 25 volt. If V in is greater than 100, it is 25 volt. So it will be a constant line only. If you draw VTC, V0 versus V in, no matter if you change the voltage V in or not, it will always be 25, right? But we will draw V0 only. V0 with respect to time t. V0 with respect to time t. Oh, no, no, no. Not time t. Sorry, sorry. We will draw VTC only. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. We will draw VTC only. Sorry, sorry. V naught versus V in. So it will always be 25 volt only. V naught will always be 25 volt only. Right? Did you understand this question? First, we found VD1, VD2. Then we got to know that VD2 is initially off. VD1 can turn on, diode D1 can turn on when V in is greater than 0. So, first condition is V in less than 0. For V in less than 0, both are off 25 volt. For V in greater than 100, we got to know that D1 is on. Right? 
but d2 is still off so still v0 will be 25 volt only so this will be the graph let's move on to the next question try it on your own and then see the solution right now we will apply again open circuit test but will we draw the circuit this, this time okay i think i should draw <laughs> but you can solve without drawing the circuit because in the exam again and again you will not be drawing right you have to eventually learn the skill of solving the circuit without drawing it what we are doing applying open circuit test you can skip this part where i am uh, actually i should pause the video and then i should come up with this you can skip this part where i am just drawing the circuit so what what is the this is your vd2 and this is your vd1 tell me what is vd1 vd1 is v in minus 100 v in minus 100 volt what is your vd2 vd2 is v in minus 25 both are depending on both are depending on v in this time but one thing we are sure if v in is less than 25 both will be off that's for sure so first condition i can make that is v in is less than 25 volt if V in is less than 25 volt, D1 and D2 both are off. And now tell me, you have done enough network analysis, you have done enough analog electronics. What will be V0 value? This is open circuited, so V0 will simply be 25 volt only. Right, so V0 is 25 only. Let's move on to the next condition when v in is greater than 25 and next threshold i can take it to be v in is less than 100 v in is greater than 25 and less than 100 so what will happen that we will see you can't directly say that v in will be that d1 will be off directly you can't say because this time d2 will turn on and if d2 turns on there can be something different in the circuit there can be i'm not sure but there can be something different in the circuit so directly you will not say that for v in less than 100 d1 will be off for V in greater than 25, D2 will turn on. So, something can happen. So, our next gap is that V in is greater than 25 volt, but less than 100 volt. Now, we will see what will happen. So, again by applying open circuit test, we will get, okay, I can copy the circuit again. So here we can see that vd1 is applying the open circuit test v in minus 100 volt right this v in is coming here and vd2 is v in minus 25 volt and since v in is greater than 25 volt that means d2 turns on d2 turns on d1 will certainly be off what i previously said that you can't tell about d1 but that will certainly be off why so because it is not forward biased the point is let's assume one diode is having four volt forward bias and one diode is having five volt forward bias one diode is having four volt forward bias one diode is having five volt forward bias then you can't say that this diode will certainly be on because this will depend on the this diode first it will turn on after that we will check this will turn on or not but one diode is having minus three volt and one diode is having 5 volt. So now you can directly say that this will be on and this will certainly be off. It's not that first I will turn it on and then I will check this. Now, the second one is already having negative potential. So that will be certainly off. Are you getting this point? If you can directly tell that one is reverse biased, one is forward biased. That means one will be off, the other one will be on. Now, if you say that this is forward biased, this can also be forward biased. This is having forward bias of 5 volt. This is having forward bias of 4 volt. So now which, which is having higher one, 5 volt. So first it will turn on and based on that we will decide whether D1 will turn on or not. The 4 volt one will turn on or not. But here in this case, what do you see? 
V in is less than 100 volt, that means certainly D1 is off. Right? Certainly D1 is off. And D1 turns off. So again, your V naught is 25 volt. Right? Now the in interesting thing will come. That is when V in is greater than 100 volt. This is the condition you are checking. If V in is greater than 100 volt, what will be V D1? V D1 will be open circuit test V in minus 100. What will be V D2? V in minus 25. Let's assume your V in is 125 volt. What will be V D1? 25. What will be V D2? 100. Which is having more? V D2 is having more. So V D2 is the boss. D2 is the boss now. What do you see? VD2 is more than VD1. So, D2 is the boss now. So, first we will turn on D2, then we will decide about D1. Here, VD2 is greater than VD1. Although both are positive, both are positive, but VD2 is greater than VD1. So, first D2 turns on, D2 turns on, then we will decide we will decide about D1. Right? So first D2 turns on, then we will decide about D1. So if D2 turns on, how will the circuit look like? D2 turns on, still we are applying open circuit test on D1. D2 turns on, we are still applying open circuit test on D1. So, how if D2 turns on, what is happening? Let's check that. So, if D2 turns on, I will copy this circuit. And I am still applying open circuit test here. So this potential is 100 volt that I know. Tell me what will be this potential. So this potential we can find. So let's assume we are giving the name this potential as V. So V minus 200 K by 25 plus V minus V in by 100 K. Kya kar raha hu yaar main? <laughs> it's actually 4 p.m. at night. Yeah. V minus 25 by 200 K plus V minus V in by 100 K is equals to 0, right? V minus 25 by 200 K plus V minus V in by 100 K. Simple KVL, KCL I am applying and here I am applying open circuit test. So, this will be open circuit, so no current will be there. So, basically what do you get? 3 V 2 2 2 multiply 3 no, sorry. Yeah, 3V minus 25 is equals to 3V minus 25 is equals to V in. Is that so? Let me check the calculation. 8, 2, 7, 2, 7 multiply. 2V in. 2V in. Yeah. So, V will be equals to 2V in plus 25 by 3. Right. Let me check the calculation. Okay. So there is a small error that I did here. If D2 turns on and D1 is off, D1 is off and D2 turns on, what will be your V0? What will be your V0? V0 will not be 25. Right. What will be the circuit? The circuit will be 100. This D2 is on and D1 is off. 25. And this is your V in. This will be the circuit. Right. This is 100. This is 25 volt. And this is 200 K. And this is your V naught. So what will be your V naught? By applying KVL you can find. Right? So V naught minus 25 by 200 K. Plus V naught minus V in by 100 K. Is equals to 
0. From there you can find and the value you will get is 2v in plus 25 by 3. 2v in plus 25 by 3. Right. So, v in note will be 2v in plus 25 by 3. Right. That was an uh, error from my side that for 25 to 100 for 25 to 100 actually I mistakenly wrote it will be 25 but if d2 is on and d1 is off so v0 will be 20 simply applying kvl you get to know that v0 will be 2 v in plus 25 by 3. Similarly here we checked that uh, what did we check that uh, we are checking the condition for d1 so we are saying that for V in greater than 100 volt that VD2 and VD1 both are having positive voltage but first D2 will turn on. If D2 turns on we have to check for D1. So at V what we are getting as at VD1 now. So my VD1 is 2V in plus 25 by 3 minus 100. Now this has to be this value has to be greater than 0 then only D1 will turn on. If vd1 greater than 0 then only d1 turns on so what that value will be this should be greater than 100 from here what do you see v naught is sorry v in is v in you get is 300 minus 25, 275 by 2, 275 by 2 will be 137.5, 275 by 2, yeah 137.5, 137.5. So here the condition that we made that we have to re-modify, right, we have to modify that condition, how we will modify that condition? that is v in is greater than 100 volt what was our second condition this was our second third condition this is third condition only this is not fourth not fourth that v in is greater than 100 volt and less than 137.5 volt that means your d1 is off and d2 is on and if this is the condition then v naught will be the same 2 v in plus 25 by 3. Did you understand this point or not? I told you these kind of questions requires high attention. So initially initially till this time we were sure that till 100 volt d1 will not turn on. After 100 volt it feels like that d1 will turn on. But we got to know that d2 is having more potential. If d2 is having more potential then d2 will define d1 turns on or not. So, D2 turns on. Now, we will we are checking the open circuit voltage across D1. Then we go to know that open circuit voltage across D1 is 2V in plus 25 by 3 minus 100. So, now this potential has to be greater than 0. Then only your D1 will turn on. So, the condition that we go to know is that is when V in is greater than 137.5 volt. So, if V in is greater than 137.5 volt, then only your D1 will turn on. Right. So, the third condition is, the fourth condition is, that is V, v in is greater than 137.5 volt. So, again we are not forgetting our ground rules. Whatever happened in the previous test, forget that. Again open circuit voltage. Again applying open circuit test. Open circuit test. This is after open circuit test. Again applying open circuit test. Whatever happened in previous test, forget about it. What is VD1? VD1 is v in minus 100 right v d1 will be v in minus 100 100 volt v d2 will be v d2 will be v in minus 25 volt v in minus 25 volt again what do you see here that d2 is having more potential so again you will feel like that d2 will decide but we know if even if d2 is deciding we know one thing even if d2 is deciding but if my v in is greater than 137.5 that means d1 will certainly turn on. Here again d2 is deciding. 
here again d2 will decide the condition of d1 but from previous analysis we know that analysis we know that d1 turns on when v in is one greater than 137.5 volt right now this is the same thing that we that d1 will turn on when v in is greater than 137.5 volt so d1 is on and d2 is on so what will be the circuit how will the circuit look like and both d1 and d2 are on now both are on simply both will be a wire and this is your v naught so simply v naught will be 100 volt only right v naught will be 100 volt v naught will be 100 volt well and good now can you think that uh, will there be any condition when first d1 turns on and then we will decide the working condition of d2 what i am saying will there be any condition that first d1 turns on and then we will decide the working condition of d2 in the question what is happening first d2 is turning on and then we are deciding the working condition of d1 but will there be any condition that first d1 turns on and then we decide the working condition of d2 no because vd1 will always be greater than vd2 will always be greater than vd1 vd2 will always be greater than vd1 so first d2 will turn on only d1 will not turn on first d2 will turn on and that will decide the working condition of d1 so when d2 turns on and we decided the working condition of d1 we got to know that v in has to be greater than 137.5 volt at that time over d1 will turn on and if d1 turns on what happens over v naught is 100 volt well and good let's uh, let's make that transfer characteristics v naught versus v in so what was our break points 25 100 100 is not a break point break point is 137.5 volt because till 100 to 137.5 it is remaining the same only so 25 and 137.5 25 and 137.5 so till 25 it was always both for off so it was always 25 it was always 25 then it became linear and then it became constant at 100 right so it was always 25 volt then it became linear that was 2 v in plus 25 by 3 it was v naught was 2 v in plus 25 by 3 you can put 137.5 here you will get 100 only this will be 100 volt right put 137.5 here 137.5 so that will be 137.5 into 2 275 275 plus 25 300 300 by 3 100 volt only so at 137.5 you are having 100 volt and greater than that as well you will be having 100 volt only so this is the voltage transfer characteristics i hope you are understanding the concept I hope you are understanding why I picked those questions, right? So, similar kind of questions we will see now, okay? This you should solve on your own and then check your answer. Tell me what will be your open circuit test we are applying. Open circuit test we are applying. What will be your VD1? VD1 will be V in minus 25. What will be your VD2? VD2 will be 75. So, what will be my first condition? Certainly, the first condition 
Are you getting it right? VD1 will be V in minus 25. What will be VD2? 100 here, 25 here. That means 75. So, what will be my first condition? First condition will be that my V in is less than 25 volt. And if V in is less than 25 volt, that means D1 is O and D2 is O. So, from here, what do you understand? D1 is O and D2 is O. So, if D2 is O, then how will the circuit look like? This is how the circuit will look like. Hundred volt, hundred k, hundred k, twenty five volt, and this will be your V naught, right? This is how the circuit will look like. So you can find the value of V naught. V naught value will be sixty two point five volt. You can apply KVL. Sorry, you can apply KCL, and you can get to know the value of V naught. That will be sixty two point five. Right. Uh, now, one thing we know that until V in is greater than 100 volt, until V in is greater than 100 volt, the deciding one will be D2 only. Until V in is greater than 100 volt. If V in is 90 volt, that means VD1 will be 90 minus 25, 65 only, and this is 75. So, still D2 will be deciding. So, first D2 will turn on only until V in is greater than 100 volt. So, next condition will be V in is less than 100 volt. Are you getting this point? What do you feel like that when V in is greater than 25, you feel like that D1 can turn on. But what will happen? D2 will say, I am the boss. I am having the more potential until V in reaches 100 volt. So, the second gap I can make is V in is greater than 25 volt, but less than 100 volt. What is your VD1? V in minus 25. What is your VD2? That is 75 volt. Right? Here, VD2 is greater than VD1. So, D2 is the boss. First, D2 will turn on. Turn on. And decide the condition of A condition of D1. So, first D2 will turn on. This will turn on. So, what will happen? This will be our V in. This is our D1 and D2 is turned on now. This is 100. D2 is turned on. Hundred twenty five hundred 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 volt twenty five volt hundred k hundred k. This is V. This is this was our V D one. V D one. This is V in, and this is sixty two point five. So tell me, what is your V D one now? V D one is V D1 is V in minus 62.5. So, what did you understand here? When V in is greater than 62.5, D1 will turn on. When V in is greater than 62.5, D1 in will turn on. Here 62.5 will be, here, the, here this potential will be 62.5. When V in is greater than 2.5 volt, And V in is greater than 62.5 volt. But when V in is greater than 62.5 volt, this will turn on, right? Yeah. When V in is greater than 62.5 volt, that D1 will turn on. D1 will turn on. So if D1 turns on, then V0 will be equal to V in only. But for less than 62.5, so basically what I, I should write that for V in less than 62.5, V in less than 62.5 volt, 
d1 is o and if d1 is o that means i need to change the condition here i will change it to 62.5 volt i will change it to 62.5 volt so d1 is o that means d1 is off and d2 is on that means your v naught will again be 62.5 volt only if d1 is o, d1 is off and d2 is on right d2 is already on then how will the circuit look like like this only so v naught will be 62.5 only so till 0 to 62.5 till 0 to 62.5 your till 0 to 62.5 your d1 is always off and d2 is always on this will be the condition now when v in is greater than 62.5 volt what will happen at that time d1 will turn on right we will do it on the next page so this is our circuit the condition is the condition we are writing that is third one not the third fourth we are writing that when v in is greater than when v in is greater than 62.5 volt d1 will turn on and d2 will turn on so again we will not forget our ground rules our ground rules is ground rules are open circuit test so v in minus 25 and vd2 is 75 so again who is the boss d2 is the boss so first d2 will turn on and d2 will turn on and decide the condition of d1 then we know from the previous analysis that d1 will also turn on right first d2 will turn on first d2 turns on then decide d1 condition from previous analysis we know d1 is on for v in greater than 62.5 volt right so v in d1 will turn on for v in greater than 62.5 volt so this will certainly turn on from previous analysis we know this thing so now both d1 d2 are on and v naught will be equals to if both are on then v naught will simply be equals to v in. both will be shorted so this is zero this is v in. so v naught will be equals to v in only is this analysis correct what do you think am i doing any mistake am i doing any mistake yes i am doing any mistake i am doing one mistake what is that now if d1 turns off for v in greater than 62.5 d2 has a fear because if d1 turns on v d2 changes if d1 turns on first v d2 was independent of v in first potential across d2 was independent of v in now if d1 turns on the potential across d2 changes Right, the potential across D2 becomes open circuit potential. I am saying so the open circuit potential across D2 becomes V in minus 100. Are you getting this point? When D1 is on, the open circuit potential across d2 changes v d2 would become v in minus 100 volt and if v in is greater than 100 volt d2 will be off this condition i have to modify by v in is greater than 100 volt and less than greater than 62.5 volt but less than 100 volt so if v in is greater than 100 volt d2 will be off so at that time d2 will be off so for v in greater than 100 volt d2 will always remain off and v naught will be 100 volt only
right this is how things can be there so always you need to check all the condition you need to check when v in is greater than 100 volt d2 will be okay you can again go by our ground rules what is our ground rules v d1 is v in minus 25 right v in minus 25 v d1 25 volt what is our v d2 v d2 is 75 volt v d2 is 75 volt this is the condition initially but if v in is greater than 100 volt if v in is greater than 100 volt what will happen d1 will turn on first d1 will turn on first and then we will decide the working condition of working condition of what then we will decide the working condition of d2 right then we will decide the working condition of d2 so first d1 will turn on so what will happen d1 turns on this will become here this will come here and then v d2 will become so if d1 turns on tell me how will your circuit look like this i can copy what will happen this will be shorted right so this v in will come here and this we are applying open circuit test so as per open circuit test if d2 turns on that that means v d2 would become v in minus 100 and for v in greater than 100 d2 is off and if d2 is off that means this will be off v0 will be 100 volt only so these were three different question and three different things and that's all nothing different can be asked from these kind of analysis did you understand the complete three different questions thoroughly we started from here in the first question what did we see here we saw that V in minus 100 volt and the other one is having 75 volt, right? This is what we see in the first question, V in minus 100 and other one is having minus 75 volt actually, not 75. It is having minus 75 volt, so this will be off only. Initially for V in less than 100, V d1 will be off. So V naught is 25 volt. It feels like for V in greater than 100 volt, V d1 can turn on. And this is what happened for V in greater than 100 volt, V d1, d1 turns on, but V d2 remains off only. So V0 is 25 volt only. In the next question, what did we see? Here, both voltage initially was dependent on V in only. Both voltage were dependent on V in only. But the important thing to note here was that here VD2 was always greater than VD1, no matter what happens. Here VD2 was always greater than VD1. So when V in is less than 25, both are off. For V in greater than 25, VD1 turns on, and for less than V in greater than 25 and less than 100 volt, D1 turns on and D2 is off and then V0 is 2 V in plus 25. Now for V in greater than 100 volt, it feels like that, it feels like that D1 can turn on, but first D2 will turn on. If D2 is turned on, after that we will decide whether D1 will turn on or not. So if after turning on D2, we got to know that V D1 is 2 V in plus 25 by 3 minus 100. So for D1 to turn on, this potential should be greater than 0. So V in value came out to be 137.5. That means V in should be, here I should have written, greater than. So that we got to know that V in should be greater than 137.5 volt, then only your diode D1 will turn on. So for less than that, D1 is off, D2 is on. So V0 is 2 V in plus 25 by 3. And when V in is greater than 137.5 volt, what is happening? V in is greater than 137.5 volt. This was the circuit, right? When V in is greater than 137.5 volt, here what was happening? D1 will turn on. And at that time, 
what vd2 would become vd2 would become 75 only right vd2 would become when vn is greater than 137.5 volt this we are applying open circuit test from here we got to know that here again d2 will decide the working condition of d1 but from previous analysis we got to know that d1 turns on for vn greater than 137.5 volt so d1 will turn on so d1 will turn on d1 will turn on and v0 will be 100 volt only but i need to check what is happening to vd2 vd2 becomes here it becomes 100 volt and this becomes 25 and what becomes vd1 vd1 becomes v in minus 100 right vd1 becomes v in minus 100 and that is 75 when v in is greater than 175 volt d1 can say i will become the boss if d1 can say that i will become the boss then it can drive the condition of d2 if he becomes the boss that means first d1 will turn on if d1 first turns on here it will be 100 here it will be 25 so always d2 will be on right so what i am saying here is that uh, now both are on right both are on d1 d2 are on both are on v0 is 100 volt that's good okay now what is your vd1 now if d1 is on what how do i explain it what i am saying is that uh, this that both are on so here my vd1 is v in minus 100 and vd2 is v in minus 25 so there will be never a condition where d2 will where d1 will become the deciding one will there be any condition where d1 becomes the uh, deciding one at 175 175 this will be having 75 and this will be having 150 yeah let's assume v in is 200 volt at 200 volt we will again apply open circuit test this will give you 100 volt this will give you 175 volt so again this will be deciding so here the point is that vd2 is always greater than vd1 so always the deciding one will be d2 first d2 will turn on and it will decide the working condition of d1 so d2 turns on and it decides the working condition of d1 so there we go to know that v d d1 will turn on for v in greater than 137.5 volt so for that it will be 100 volt now let's move on to this question although for although this given question is from 0 to 150 only but we are checking for 0 to infinity right we are checking from minus infinity to infinity actually not 0 to infinity input can be minus infinity to infinity the same voltage transfer characteristic it will follow not till 1 and 150 we are checking from minus infinity to infinity now next last question this was very interesting vd1 was v in minus 75 vd2 was initially it was 75 volt only so what we saw here that if vn is less than 25 volt then d1 will certainly be off and d2 is d2 is on so v0 is 62.5 now for vn greater than 25 volt it feels like that d1 can turn on but first d2 will be turned on right so first d2 will be turned on so now d2 will decide the working condition of d1 so from that we got to know that vn has to be greater than 62.5 volt for d1 to turn on so then we saw that for v in greater than 62.5 volt what will happen that d1 will turn on now if d1 will if d1 turns on if d1 turns on v0 will be equals to v in right now if uh, this is the condition that uh, d1 turns on right now if v in is what is your vd1 vd1 is v in minus 25 volt so with increasing v in vd1 is increasing but vd2 is constant open circuit vd2 is constant if you increase v in vd1 will increase but vd2 is constant so when v in is greater than 100 vd1 will become greater than 75 and if it becomes greater than 75 that means that will be the deciding one so when v in is here both are different one is constant one is depending on v in so v in is increasing so vd vd1 can d1 can become the deciding one when vn is greater than 100 so when vn is greater than 100 d1 becomes the deciding one so d1 becomes the deciding one so first d1 will turn on and it will check the working condition of d2 right so what was the difference between the open circuit potential of uh, three questions in this question 
VD1 was depending on VIN, so it can any time become deciding one. In the previous one, v both were depending on VIN, and from the expression we could go get to know that VD1 will always be greater than VD1. So always D2 will be the deciding one. And in the first one, what we saw, the open circuit potential of VD2 was negative, so that will be always O. And VD1 will turn on after greater than 100. So that was the complete analysis of all three questions. I hope you understood it completely. So in these kind of questions, what will be our initial task? We will always find the open circuit voltage across all the diode. Then we will see if they are depending on VIN or not. If they are depending on VIN, we will check what is the relation between VD2 and VD1. Then we will get to know that who will be the deciding one. And based on that, we will do our analysis. Based on that, we will find our breakpoints. And then it will be good to go. Right? Did I draw the transfer characteristic of the last one? I guess I did not draw the transfer characteristic of this now. So this we will draw transfer characteristics. I hope you are understanding it very clearly. So in this one, what are our breakpoints? So for V in less than 25, always V naught is 62.5. Till 62.5, it is 62.5 only. After that, it is equals to V in only. So 62.5 and 100. 100. So before 62.5, it is 62.5 only. Then it becomes equals to V in. And then it is 100. Right? This is 62.5 volt. This is V naught is equal to V in. And this is 100 volt. Well and good. Let's move on to the next problem. This problem for output to be clipped, the input should be should lie out of what range? You want output to be clipped. What we will do? Ground root apply open circuit test. Let's call this one as D1, this one as D2. So without even drawing the circuit, tell me what will be VD1. Take your time and tell me. Don't do it wrong. V in plus 1. Is that your answer? That is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because if you apply open circuit test, both will be open circuited. So this potential will become V in by 2. Applying after open circuit test. Applying after open circuit test, what is happening? This branch will not be in action. This branch will also be not be in, will not be in action. So how will your circuit look like? This is R. This branch is not in action. This is also not in action. And this is R. This is your V. And the potential you are checking that is here. This is R. This is R. And this is V. So this potential would become V in by 2. Right? So this potential will be V in by 2. So your V D1 will be V in by 2 minus the potential of this one. The potential of this one is minus 1. So V in by 2 plus 1. V D2 is minus 2. The potential here is minus 2 minus V in by 2. Are you getting my point? V D2 is potential of P that is minus 2 minus of potential of N that is my V in by 2. Right? So what do you think from here? When will diode D1 turn on? For, for diode D1 to turn on, you need V in should be greater than minus 2. Right? For diode, diode D1 to turn on, I will write the potential again on the next page. V D1 is V in by 2 plus 1. And V D2 is minus 2 minus V in by 2. Right? So when, when D1 will turn on? When V in by 2 plus 1 is greater than 0 that means v is greater than minus 2 at that time d1 turns on what about d2 at that time if v is greater than minus 2 let's assume v is minus 1 greater than minus 2 so minus 2 plus 1 by 2 it is again negative only right so what about vd2 the minus 2 minus V in by 2 is greater than 0. That means 
vin by 2 is less than minus 2 that means vin should be less than minus 4 so vin is less than minus 4 that means d2 turns on so is there any common area between both of them it is saying that it should be less than minus 4 then d2 will turn on now this is saying that if it is greater than minus 2 then d1 will turn on no common area in between them so we don't need to think much so if uh, for v in less than minus 4 d2 turns on that means here d2 will be turned off for v in greater than minus 2 and here d1 turns on for v in greater than minus 2 so d1 will be turned off here what about in between this is the condition for v in less than minus 4 this is the condition for v in greater than minus 2 what about the condition in between minus 2 to minus 4 check by the example put minus 3 if v in is minus 3 what will happen v in is minus 3 if v in is minus 3 this will be minus 0.5 and this will be minus 0.5 both will be o right v in is minus 3 so put minus 3 here this will be minus 2 plus 3 by 2 minus 0.5 put minus 3 here minus 3 by 2 plus 1 minus 0.5 both will be turned off so both are of d1 and d2 off both are off right so what will be your output in this case if both are off what will be your output if both are off what will be your output v in by 2 v output will be v in by 2 now tell me about this case here d2 turns on if d2 turns on and d1 is off what will be your output minus 2 v0 will be minus 2 volt right what they are saying that d2 turns on and d1 is off if d2 turns on that means this will be shorted so complete minus 2 will come across output and what about this one if d1 turns on if d1 turns on that means this complete minus 1 will come across output d1 turns on the complete minus 1 will come across output v0 will be minus 1 volt so you want your output to be clipped you want your output to be clipped so what is happening what are our two breakpoints minus 2 and minus 4 this is minus 4 and this is minus 2 this is v in and this is v naught so between minus 2 and minus 4 v naught is equal to v in by 2 between minus 2 and minus 4 v naught is equal to v in by 2 after that greater than minus 2 when v in is greater than minus 2 v naught is minus 1 wait a minute when v in is greater than minus 2 yeah when v in is greater than minus 2 it will be minus 1 only and for less than that it will be minus 2 only so this will be my waveform this will be minus 2 this is v naught is equals to v in by 2 and this is minus 1 right so what do you think where output is getting clipped for v in less than minus 4 and for v in greater than minus 2 whatever the value you are having let's assume this is your input this was your input this is plus 5 this is minus 5 so if you give this input to this circuit what it will do for for greater than minus 2 for every value greater than minus 2 let's assume minus 2 is here not here let's assume minus 2 is here so for every value greater than minus 2 it will give you a constant voltage of minus 1 so it will give you a constant voltage of minus 1 in between it will give you when minus 2 to minus 4 minus 2 to minus 4 in this much of value let's assume this is minus 4 in this much of value it will give you half of the input and after that if it is less than minus 4 that means minus 4 to go down then it will give you minus 2 only so this is how the graph will go okay I can make the graph in the next page. So let's make the graph in the next page. Let's make 
let's assume any input and make the graph let's assume any input i am assuming i am assuming it it goes from minus 10, plus 10 to 10 okay this is plus 10 volt and this is minus 10 volt this is your minus 2 volt and this is your minus 4 volt this we are assuming for every value greater than minus 2 volt you are having minus 1 for every value greater than minus 2 volt you are having minus 1 I should have worn something like this, right? Every value greater than minus 2 volt, it will be minus 1 only. And in and uh, for every value less than minus 4, for every value less than minus 4, these are the points where the values will be less than minus 4. For every value less than minus 4, this will be minus 4. Let's assume this is your minus 4. For every value less than minus 4, it is giving you minus 2. It is giving you minus 2. It is giving you minus 2. Right? In between, it is following the input. Although the graph does not look that good, but I hope you are getting the point. This is V0 is equal to V in by 2. Here it is giving you minus 2 volt, and here it is giving you minus 1 volt, and here this is the graph v0 is equal to v in by 2 right you got the point so where it is not get, getting clipped you want your output to be clipped you want your output to be clipped so v in should lie out of what range between input value of minus 2 to minus 4 output is not getting clipped for v in minus 2 to minus 4 output is not getting clipped output is not clipped right so input should lie out of the range minus 2 to minus 4 if it wants to be clipped So that's it that's the answer that's the complete analysis i hope you have understood so we checked the waveform that it is getting clipped for v in greater than minus 2 and it is getting clipped for v in less than minus 4 it is getting, getting clipped to minus 2 for less than minus 4 it is getting clipped to minus 1 for greater than minus 2 in between it is v naught is equal to half of the input voltage right so input should lie out of the range from minus 2 to minus 4 if it wants to be clipped right exactly same kind of question was asked in the gate not the same data was there but same kind of question was there so yeah that's the completion of assignment two it took us two lectures so good questions were there and i hope you got the concept of this one always find the potential vd1 and vd2 then check which one will be the dominating one after that only you need to comment okay always check who will be turned on first based on that you can check the working condition of the other one got my point Okay, so let's meet in the next lecture. We will study clamper circuit. Thank you.